Happy Fitness Friday! Happy Fitness Friday, everybody! Today we are going to work out for you and show you three 100 my zone effort point or MEP busting workouts. Yes, we are. I am Dr. Ayla Donlin. And I'm Emily Sofo. And we're your my zone master trainers. I hold my doctoral degree in educational leadership. Both Emily and I hold master's degrees in kinesiology, Emily in exercise science, myself in sport and exercise psychology. We're also certified personal trainers, group fitness instructors, and we like to stay current by training and teaching while we're doing master training as well. So we're delighted to bring you content every Friday. Yes, thank you guys so much for joining us today. As you're coming in, give us a little wave, a little shout out, and if you have any questions, we will try our very best to answer them during the broadcast. If not, we'll ask, answer them after. Yes, and since we're going to be doing quite a bit of working out today, please do continue to comment and ask questions and then we can always go back afterwards and respond to your comments or questions. Yes, we've yeah. got construction going on, so yes. please don't mind. You might see a bunch of kids walking in the background. You might hear some construction. Regardless, you can show applause, hey Max, by giving us some thumbs ups some likes during the workout. That is exactly right. And of course, if you want to know more about MyZone, you can check out MyZone.org. You can look at MyZone's Facebook page, which is where many of you are now. You mm -hmm. can also check out MyZone on YouTube, which is where all of our old Fitness Friday broadcasts are housed. You can go on Instagram, Twitter, all over social media. Yes, you can also catch our MyZone Moves podcast on iTunes or Google Play. Did you already say that? No. Oh, okay. I mean, I, you usually do a really good job of explaining okay. it. So I, I thought waiting. you were going like down the list, so I just nope. wanted to make sure. <laughs> and then you can catch this blog, the 100 MEP busting workout blog on the MyZone.org page. Scroll down to the bottom to our master trainer blog, and you can even follow along today if you so desire. Yes. And thank you guys for saying hello as you're coming in. I saw Sylvia and Louise and Kimberly. Thank you for joining us. And happy Fitness Friday. Yeah. Okay, let's roll right into it. Yeah. Huh? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're wondering, you probably set monthly MEP goals, right? And that's even how you track your My Zone status. I recently reached the Hall of Fame. Woohoo! Yes. Nice job. Four years of hard work, my friends. <laughs> So if you're doing monthly MEP goal setting, then hopefully you're doing weekly MEP goal setting and maybe even MEP goals for every single workout. One of the things that I like to do for my workouts is to set a benchmark of 100 my zone effort points per workout. I don't always do that, especially if I'm in an active recovery day, I might not hit 100 my zone effort points, but that's just something I like to aim for. So we know that during the summer months, um, and especially as we get closer to the holidays here in the States, the 4th of July holiday, you might be a little bit crunched on time and you're looking for some workouts that can get you some MEPs and burn some calories pretty quickly. So we've designed three of those that are gonna do that for you. And we're gonna demonstrate all of the exercises for you today. Yes. We're gonna take some turns. So the first thing that you should do is of course a light warm up, five to 10 minutes, in the blue or the green zone. And you can do that a variety of ways. You can do a dynamic warm up. You could hop on a piece of cardio and do your warm up that way. And then you can get into the workouts. And the first workout is the swing slam superset workout. Mm. This one's designed so that you're doing kettlebell swings and slam ball slams in between opposing muscle groups, opposing muscle group supersets. So many S's, I yeah. just couldn't handle that <laughs> the one. Alliteration. Yeah. So we're gonna show you the exercises. Kettlebell swing and slam ball slams are first. I'm gonna do the kettlebell swings and Emily's gonna show you the slam ball slams. Okay, cool. Then after that, we get into our opposing muscle group supersets. So we'll just walk you through it as we go. Yeah. So I'm gonna show you kettlebell swings first. Okay. Yeah. Your repetitions are 20. And then the zone that you're aiming for would be the yellow zone. And all of this is mapped out in the blog. So take a look because all of the parameters or the goals are mapped out for you. Good morning, Trish, or hello, Trish. Hey, Trish. All right, so Ayla's doing the kettlebell swing. Yes. And you've seen us demonstrate this one plenty of times before, but just for the sake of reviewing, for my foot placement, I like to go just outside of my shoulders, and that's going to be a little bit different for everyone. And it's a hip hinge and you're working on hip extension. So you're squeezing and extending your hips and using hip extension to swing the kettlebell forward, then control the momentum back. So it's not an arm exercise. No, my arms are just there to 
support the kettlebell as it swings. Okay. So I'm going to give you a side profile as well. Great hip hinge, Ayla, looking good. And beautiful. So you're going to do 20 of those, right? Yep, you're going to do 20 of those and then you're going to go right into 20 slam ball slams, which Emily's going to show you. Tap in, tap out. Yeah. All right, so for the slam ball slam, I'm going to again place my feet parallel, hip width apart, maybe even a little bit wider than that. I'm going to bring the ball up overhead, tighten my core, and slam it down toward the ground. Now when I do that slam, you're going to see I go into hip extension and then a hip hinge. My hips go back, my back stays flat on that. So I'll just do a couple for you. Hey! Beautiful. Cool. So you've got 20 kettlebell swings, 20 slam ball slams, and you're going to do that in between each superset. Your first superset is a squat and a hamstring curl. We don't have a hamstring curl machine out here, so I'm gonna demonstrate the squat, and you'd go right from 20 squats, boom, into 20 hamstring curls, back to back. Okay. So you, can use, you can use a variety of equipment. You can use a barbell, you can use dumbbells, you can have the bar back loaded for a back squat, or you can bring the bar to the front, and do a front squat if you wanted to. If you have dumbbells, you can take your dumbbells by the, your sides and do a squat that way. Or maybe you want to do a sumo squat. You have so many varieties available to you. Whatever, whatever variation of the squat you would choose, you do 20 squats, you go right into 20 hamstring curls. You've all seen a hamstring curl machine. You can be laying down prone and do a hamstring curl that way, or sometimes there's a seated hamstring curl, whatever suits your fancy. <laughs> All right, and also it's important to note that I really like the way you designed this, Ayla, and I'm sorry guys, I hope that you can hear us. If you can't, let us know. So the cardio portion is the swings and the slams, and then the more resistance training portion that we're focusing on now, these supersets, your heart rate's gonna decrease, right? Green zone? Yeah, okay. most likely it will. And again, that will depend on how quickly you're moving yeah. and how much weight you're using. So what we've what we've designed is to be in green. Mm -hmm. So you'd be in yellow during the kettlebell swings and the slam ball slams, yeah. and then in green during your superset. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so then we would do swings and slams, and then we'd go into another superset, upper body this time. We've got construction, we've got airplanes, we've got body construction going on. It is a wild fitness Friday. <laughs> hey, Marcin. All right, so I'll show you the next super set, seated row and chest press. Now, we don't have a seated row machine out here, uh, but you could do this with a cable, you know, where you're, you're actually seated on a bench and rowing with the cable out in front. You don't even need to be seated necessarily if you don't have access to that equipment. You could always just have a cable and do your row, or you can even do a hip hinge forward and row right here. All right, so that's your row. Do what you can with what you have. The next thing is the chest press. So, Ayla, will you lower the camera? A little Gladly. Bit? Thank you. If I had a bench, I would use that, but I just got the ground. So that's cool too. That works just fine. Hands come up above my chest with the dumbbells, or you could use a barbell as well. Slowly lower your elbows out to the side, and then press straight back up right above your chest with control down and up. And that's 20 reps, right? Yep. Awesome. Yeah, nice. That's um, your next superset. <clears throat> yeah, and all of the repetitions in this particular workout, the swing slam superset workout, all of the repetitions are 20 repetitions. So your kettlebell swings, your slam ball slams, and all of the opposing muscle group supersets, 20 reps. So again, after you do your seated row and your chest press, you do another set of swings and slams, and then you get into your monster walk and curtsy lunge. Mm. I like to use a band for the monster walk. And again, you have all kinds of options available to you 
Oh, there we go. Push this up just a smidge. Um, you have all kinds of bands available to you. You could wear the band around your knees, around your shins, or around your ankles. And I'm going to put this around my ankles so that you can see what's going on. So I put this at mid foot on both sides. And then I like to take a little bit of a posterior pelvic tilt just to begin with. And then you're walking laterally and I'm, al I'm always maintaining about hip or shoulder width apart as I step in together. And I'm trying to step out as wide as I can. Another option that you can take is stepping side to side. Nice. Like this. So you would do 20 one direction, 20 the other direction. Cool. For a total of 40 because it's 20 reps each way. And then your curtsy lunge, you could do with dumbbells, you could do with barbells, you could do with body weight. Curtsy lunge, I'm stepping to the side, my other leg steps behind, and I'm curtsying down. Oops, be careful! <laughs> I'm tripping little children as I do this. Curtsy lunge, step to the side, step behind, and then if you wanted, you can even tap your back knee down. Yeah. So you're working on the lateral side of your glutes as you do your curtsy lunge. Love it. Becky asked if there's anything you can use at home for the slam ball portion if you don't own a ball like that. Small children, pets. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding, Becky. Um, I'm trying to think of what all you could use. You probably would need like a, a bag of some sort. Yeah, and it probably wouldn't have a bounce where you could bounce it down and, and catch it back. Yeah. Um, but you could use... I'm trying to think of like, it would have to be a big bean bag or something like yeah. that yeah. that you could use for the slam ball slams. Yeah. You'd want to be careful because if you are if you were using something that bounced back, be careful because I've seen many people like using a medicine ball or something where they slam down and it comes back up. So yeah. whatever you choose, be careful. Yeah, or you don't even have to necessarily do the slam. You could do some other cardio focused exercise like a burpee or, you know, just yeah. to get your heart rate up. Yeah. And the, what we're working with the slam ball slams, right? So at our shoulder and shoulder girdle, we're working on extension. So anything that's working extension through your arms, and then you're working on abdominal flexion, and you're working on hip flexion. So exercises that would work that. Yeah. Cool. Thanks, Becky. Good All right. question. So then we would do the swings and the slams. And then dumbbell lateral raise and lat pull down superset, which I'll demonstrate now. You bet. So with the lateral raise, I'm going to separate my feet parallel hip width apart. I have dumbbells that I know are going to work for me. These are relatively light. I recommend that you go lighter on these and then work your way up for sure. Yeah. Soften your knees, squeeze your bottom, abs in tight. I'm going to lift out to the side and then lower back down. And I actually prefer to lift slightly forward of my shoulders. You can see that I'm aiming in front of, oh hey, in front of my shoulders as opposed to directly out to the side. That's a little bit easier on my shoulders. I'm lifting up to shoulder height, bringing it back down, making sure that I'm not using the momentum from the rest of my body, right? This is wrong. <laughs> it's just gonna be the arms moving. Cool. And then we don't have a lat pull down out here but you certainly could use one if you have one at your facility. Um, any sort of exercise that would work your lats would be a good alternative for this, but a lat pull down, again, you've got the bar up overhead and you're pulling it down toward your chest. Mm -hmm. cool. And if you have a band, then you could put a band over a tree or some sort of attachment and then pull the band down as well. Yeah. So, there's a lot of different options that you can use. Yes. Okay, then you'd finish with your kettlebell swings and your slam ball slams, and that takes us through our swing slam super set workout. Yes, yes. And Amanda is asking, thank you for the question, what helps with soreness? Is there anything that I can do? Great question, Amanda. Yeah. Yeah, there are a few things that you can do. Uh, what we recommend is that if you are a little bit sore to the point where you can still move around and function, then actually keep moving. That sometimes can help mm -hmm. to alleviate some of the pain. So maybe a really light workout or even a walk, some light stretching, that type of thing. Yes, and it can seem counterintuitive to move when you're sore, mm -hmm. but that's actually one of the best things that you can do. So just mm -hmm. getting blood flow back into the muscles that are sore. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 
and I, I believe we may have written about this. We wrote about delayed onset muscle soreness, right? Yeah. yeah. So, uh, Amanda, if you go to the myzone.org website, you can scroll to the bottom and on the blog, I believe we've posted numerous resources about yeah. overtraining and I believe uh, DOMS as well, delayed onset muscle soreness. Yes, I think we even covered it in a Fitness Friday. So if you did. go to the MyZone Moves YouTube channel, you might mm -hmm. find some information about soreness there as well. Yes, yes, but the struggle is real. I'm experiencing a little DOMS myself right yes. now. Yeah, and, <laughs> and soreness is a normal part of an exercise routine. And in fact, it's a good thing because it means that you're using the principle of progressive overload, where you're challenging yourself to a point at which you're creating you're creating an overload, a stimulus that your body is having to adopt to, adapt to. So, bless you. Thank you. So, it's a good thing in moderation. So, give yourself a little time off in between the next workout. Yeah. Thanks, Kimberly. Yeah. That's so nice. We love Fridays too. Yeah, we love <laughs> Fitness Fridays. Yep. Are you ready for workout number two you. of the three 100 met burst bursting, busting, bursting workouts? Let's do it. The second one is called the push pull plank workout. You're going to be doing plank variations in between push and pull exercises. And this one, the repetitions are uh, a little bit less than the previous workout, which means you should use a little more weight. So you're targeting 12 to 15 repetitions on your push and pull exercises, and then you're going to be using body weight for your plank variations. So the first exercise is a leg press or a squat. And I already demonstrated a lot of squat variations in our previous workout. And leg press you can utilize in your fitness facility. Sometimes there's a horizontal leg press, or sometimes you're laying on your back and you're pressing up. So choose a weight that's gonna challenge you where it's gonna feel tough to be completing the 13th, the 14th, the 15th repetition. And you're gonna do two sets back to back. So do 12 to 15 repetitions of a leg press or a squat, take a little break, maybe 30 seconds, and then do a second set. Then you're gonna go into a hamstring curl or a deadlift. And we demonstrated previously the hamstring curl. You can find a hamstring curl machine in your facility. A deadlift I'll demo real quick. These guys are so cute. I don't know if you guys can see these All little right. kids. So for a deadlift, if you're using a barbell deadlift, you're gonna keep the barbell really close to your legs. I like to describe it like you're shaving your legs down and shaving your legs up. So you're gonna hinge at your hips, slide the barbell down your legs, then squeeze your glutes and your hamstrings to pull the barbell back up. And I'm keeping my lats engaged to keep my shoulders pulled back. And I'm pulling my abdominals in so that I'm keeping a neutral spine as I hinge forward and then squeeze to pull up. Right, and again, choose a weight where you can get 12 to 15 reps, but it's challenging to complete the 13th, 14th, and 15th repetition. Yes, absolutely. And yeah. we actually did a whole broadcast about the deadlift mm -hmm. previously where we went over form and everything. So that, that was another good one to check out. Yeah, if you want more info about the deadlift, mm -hmm. check it out. Mm -hmm. Okay, up next is plank thread the needle. You want to show yeah, them that one? I do. Okay. So in between now, we're doing a plank variation. So I did my push exercise with leg press or squat. I did my pull exercise with hamstring curl or deadlift. And now I'm doing my plank variation. So this one, you're gonna hold a plank in the middle for 30 seconds mm -hmm. and then thread the needle. You take your plank over to the side and I'm gonna give you a side profile for this one. You can be on your feet, you can stack your feet. I find it easier to have a staggered position. You can also place your inside knee down for a modification if you'd like to. Nice. Then you take your top arm and you thread the needle underneath. You're rotating through your torso and then squeezing back to the top. And if you're on your feet, you can really go pretty far as you thread the needle through. Yeah. One thing, whoa, run away uh, dumbbell and run away phone today, folks. One thing that you'll notice that Ayla did really nicely was maintain a flat back. What I often will see folks doing with their threading the needle is their back will actually round as they try to come down into that rotation. And we don't want the back to be rounded. We don't want to have spinal flexion while you're rotating. That can be a little bit dangerous for the spine. So try to maintain that nice flat back throughout the rotation. So you're gonna hold a plank in the center for 30 seconds and then you're gonna thread the needle on each side for five repetitions on each side. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, next up for another 12 to 15 reps, we're doing a dumbbell chest press, which we actually already demonstrated. So you go right back into the exercise I showed you for the last workout, just that chest press with the dumbbells on the ground or on a bench. And then the dumbbell lawn mower row. Ayla had to tell me what this one was. It's essentially when you're on a bench and you're doing a single arm row. So I'll demonstrate for you now. Yeah, I can pull this down for you. So I have a bench and, and maybe be able to put my leg up on that bench. If you don't have one, you could always just have your hand on a chair or something out in front of you and you're going to come down and then row up. Like you're starting a lawnmower, yes. hence the name Lawnmower Row. Exactly. All right. right on. Runaway barbell. Yeah, Michael, I had to make okay. sure that I wasn't going to run over any little kids. <laughs> right on. And then plank in the center and on each side. So mm -hmm. you've essentially seen that planking in the center. Then you'd hold on each side and you can see if you're following along on the blog, you're going to hold the center for 30 seconds and then each side for 30 seconds. Yep. Then we move into a medicine ball toss and a cable chop. Those are our next push and pull exercises. So med ball toss. You can have a bunch of variations for this one. You, oh, you thought I was going to do it, didn't you? So you're going to toss forward this way. And I like to find a wall and toss against the wall and then it'll bounce back and then you can keep tossing forward. So that's your push exercise med ball toss. Choose a weight that you can get some pretty good momentum, but it's challenging to accelerate as you push off. And you can think of it like a chest press, right? Where you're pushing out. So you want to maintain through your shoulder blades. You want to keep your shoulder blades pulled relatively together, not rounding too far forward as you do the med ball toss forward. So keep a nice upright posture as you're doing that. And then the cable chop, you can again use a band attached to something above, or if you have a cable machine, you can go from up high and again, pulling your abdominal muscles in tight, maybe taking a slight posterior tilt and you're gonna chop down. So you're gonna chop down 12 to 15 one direction, then take the cable from the other direction and chop down that way. So you're doing a combination of slight rotation and flexion as you pull through. Nice. The last exercise in the push-pull plank workout is a walking bear. It's a variation of a plank, and I will demonstrate that for you right now. So with the bear, I'm gonna show you on a side view. You're going to come onto all fours and curl your toes under. Now, I'm maintaining a lot of control through my abdominals while I do this exercise. My back is not going to round or arch. It's just going to stay in a neutral position. Belly button up toward your spine. You're going to lift your knees by pushing with your feet up. And they're just about an inch or two off the ground. Easy. You're going to hold this. And then if you're ready to, you can start to take little steps to the right and to the left. So it would be 12. One direction, 12, the other. You can hear by my <laughs> breathing that I'm really trying to maintain um, a tight core during that exercise. Yeah. It's a lot harder than it looks and it than is. it sounds. Yes. Okay, so ladies and gents, that is your push, pull, plank, MEP busting workout. We're ready for workout number three, yep. which is the row, rep, rope workout. You need a rowing ergometer, you need your body, and you need a battle rope to do this workout. It's a fun one and it goes fast. So it's just body weight exercises with a rowing ergometer and a battle rope for high intensity intervals. You start on the rower and you're gonna do 30 30s in terms of the high intensity interval training. You're gonna work as hard as you can for 30 seconds, you're gonna be on, and then you're gonna recover as much as you can for 30 seconds, and you're gonna do that five times. So you'll have five minutes in total on the rowing ergometer, and then you move into your body weight exercises. Cool, all right, so the first one is a body weight squat, which we've definitely shown throughout this uh, broadcast today. Um, so you do 20 reps of the body weight squat and then 20 reps of a body weight lunge. Now you can, I'm going to lunge over all these kids. You can lunge in so many different ways. Um, I'll show you a couple of options right now. So you could do a lunge where you're just staying in place, right? 20 of these switch, 20 on each side. You could do alternating, stepping back. 
you can do alternating stepping forward regardless from my hips up this is staying stable it almost looks like I'm not moving if you were just looking from my hips up right just the legs are moving here my core is nice and tight shoulders up or shoulders back and down right and then you can also do walking lunges as well yes nice. lots of options there a lot of options yep. right on okay so after your body weight squats and your body weight lunges you'll go right into push-ups and a horizontal pull-up you know push-ups i'm just going to come down and show you you've got a lot of options for push-ups you can do push-ups on your toes and you can come down to whatever range of motion feels right for your body some people can come all the way down chest to floor and then push back up others you might maintain six inches between your chest and the ground or the floor whatever works best for your body you can always do a push-up on your knees for a modification as well and if it feels good for your body or you want to work more on your triceps you can keep your elbows in toward your sides as opposed to out at your shoulders so you just pull your elbows in a little more narrow and then come down and keep your elbows by your sides so you would do 20 push-ups and then you can find a bar so in the gym I like to use a Smith machine for this You've, or a squat rack and you put a barbell on it and you're gonna get underneath it and you're gonna put your legs out and then you're gonna pull up so you're pulling your chest toward the bar the less you bend your knees the straighter your legs are the more intense it's going to be and so you might also use your hips and use hip extension in that exercise as well so you can use a lot of variations for the horizontal pull-up you're working the muscles in your upper and mid back as you do that one so we've got push-ups horizontal pull-up and then we go right into our battle rope drills this is another five minutes of high intensity interval training 30 seconds on 30 seconds to recover and we've given you five different battle rope exercises you do the exercise as hard as you can for 30 seconds, then you take a 30 second break and move on to the next one. So Emily, will you shout them out to me and I'll do them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, Ela. We're gonna come a little closer to Ela. All right, Ela, can you show us a double? A double wave. Yeah. Boom. Love both arms together. Can you show us a snake? Nice. How about circle out? Ooh. How about circle in? Nice. And alternating wave. Beautiful. Excellent. Good job, Ayla. Thanks. So you're going to do all of those, right? Yes. Because it's you five minutes total and you're going to do 30 seconds right. on, 30 seconds off. Cool. Exactly. So you do your double wave for 30 seconds. Take a 30 second break. Then you would do the snake, I think is next for 30 seconds. Take a 30 second break. And then you repeat, my friends. Woo. You could go through that two or three times. So you've got your hit training on the rower, body weight exercises, then your hit training with the rope, repeat. Nice. Mm -hmm. And those are the workouts. Three 100 met busting workouts. Let's, let's name them again. They're right. fun names. They are fun names. is the swing slam superset workout second one is the push pull plank workout and the third was the row rep rope workout nice yeah all right friends so we've got some work for you to do right we've got some options here we would love to see you guys doing these workouts when you post to social media be sure to use the hashtags my zone moves and effort rewarded and we can see what you're doing yes we love to see what you're doing add us as social connections on my zone via the my zone app as well because then we can see one another's workouts don't forget when you're posting your workouts on your my zone app label your workout rate how you liked it using those smiley faces and then post up a picture of your workout as well we're trying to be more purposeful about naming our workouts and putting pictures up we'd love for you to join us in that yes yes yeah thank you guys so much for joining us again you can always check out more about my zone on myzone.org and all over social media as well as 
the My Zone Moves podcast. Yes, and there will be a podcast up if it's not already. We interviewed Dr. Ralph Rosenick, who's done a lot of research on high intensity interval training. So many of you I know are very interested in that topic. So check that one out. All right. All right. Thank you so much for joining us. Yes, for this crazy fitness Friday where we had (laughs) construction, airplanes, children, and body construction all going on at the same time. (laughs) All right. We'll see you next week and keep keep moving moving forward. forward. Bye, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Have a great weekend. (laughs)